I do want to talk a little bit more about the situation with Yemen's Houthi rebels because they claim to have a new hypersonic missile in their arsenal. How significant is something like that? I mean, when you hear hypersonic missile, that just sounds very destructive and powerful. Well, Josh, this is a good question. And this is actually something I used in all my classes this week to to have the students talk about the credibility of such a report. That, you know, some reports of this came out of a Russian news agencies. So let me characterize hypersonics. Hypersonic missile technology is very sophisticated and very advanced. I mean, these missiles fly at thousands of miles an hour. There is no missile defense capability against any hypersonic missile that exists in the world. There are two nations in the world who have proven operational hypersonic capability. And th those nations are Russia and China, with China be being the most advanced. Now, Iran came out a couple of weeks ago and claimed that they tested a hypersonic missile capability. I, I believe that our intelligence, United States intelligence, has the sophisticated collection capability to know if, an, if a third country has this capability. And so we haven't come out and acknowledged that Iran has that. I don't believe they have the technological capability to do this. The Houthis certainly do not have the technological capability to develop such a missile uh, system like this. Now, what I think they may be alluding to, or at least trying to create some concern, and this is why I would not ignore this report, is the Houthis early in the week at the start of Ramadan came out and said they're going to expand their operations into the Indian Ocean and down south to the Cape of Good Hope, which is, goes around the southern part of the African continent. So they may have, through Iran, smuggled in some sort of long-range ballistic missile capability that can strike out. I mean, Iran has a significant, probably one of the largest missile capabilities in the world that it's exporting to Russia and obviously the Houthis. So maybe there's some sort of new missile or longer range missile that got into the Houthis hands that they might be alluding to a threat. I would be very critical of saying that the Houthis had a hypersonic capability. Yeah, I mean, it just sounds very powerful and it's something that a lot of people have discussed just because of the strength of something like that. So thank you so much for helping to break that down for us. Is there anything else you want to add about any of this here before I let you go? Well, Josh, just to, to tie on to the end of the Houthi situation, I think uh, we, we've seen an uptick in attacks this week, almost every day, but we've seen at least 15 different Houthi attacks and using over 60 different types of munitions. So they've expanded a, a, attacks against U.S. naval vessels, commercial vessels, French and U.K. Uh, combat vessels. So you see a lot of this attacking continue to take place, not only in the Red Sea, but also in the Gulf of Aden. So they're expanding their operations. They are not deterred, and their capability hasn't been destroyed. So I've put that into context. And then another thing that, that kind of goes to this ceasefire agreement, and I'll be very brief on this, and that's the Palestinian Authority. Uh, Abbas, the president, replaced the prime minister. If you recall, a few weeks ago, the prime minister resigned. He replaced the prime minister with an ally of his. So someone who's been responsible for kind of rebuilding efforts in Gaza, the West Bank. That's a positive move to try to create some sense of order out of a very disorganized Palestinian authority. However, Hamas spoke out against that. And, and they spoke out that they didn't have any support for the new prime minister. So I think what you see is you go forward with ceasefire talks, the dissension, the breakdown, uh, and the inability of governance of the Palestinian Authority is a weak link, not only in negotiations, but in any move forward post-combat. All right. Mark Chandler, as always, thank you so much for taking the time to join us here and break down all the latest headlines. These developments happening a lot, so there is always a lot to discuss. Thank you again for being here with us today. You're welcome, Josh. My pleasure as always, and, and hope you have a great day. You too.